Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. Now, a lot of students who I've taught over the years have either a, a doubt about whether they are playing things well or they are told or, you know, there's a kind of strategy printed in a book or, or there's a YouTuber like me or a ton of other YouTubers out there who have a certain way to say, this is how you're going to ensure it to be correct. You know, so you're always tending to trust someone else or a book or a course or a system but i i feel that none of these methods propel you to trust your own instinct or yourself when you're playing the piano or any musical instrument i think whatever i tell you in this lesson might apply to a lot of other instruments but i'm going to focus it from a piano perspective so a lot of these strategies are not going to ensure immediate results and they are not quick tips and tricks. They are long-term solutions to trusting your own instincts as a player, as a piano player or anyone else. Because ultimately, you have to know if it's right or wrong. That's primarily the reason for doing this video. And a lot of students ask me, how do I practice the piano? Which book should I follow? Is this the right technique? Is my hand right? You know, It's not only about the technique, the notation and following things exactly and listening to a bunch of people. And it's also not right to always take the opinion of seniors, you know, or teachers or fellow musicians. It, it's nice for you to feel your own music and what you feel is what it is. You know, if you feel good about it, it has to be good. And if you just feel 99% about it, then, well, you, you're you not supposed to send that out there. It has to be 100%. So before we get started, it'll be nice if you can consider supporting us on our Patreon page. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button somewhere near the video and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. First point would be play whatever it is you have to play with a drum backing track. So a drum backing track will allow you to play in a real world situation with a drummer who's playing that groove over a loop. Now you could find a drum backing track either on your keyboard. If you have a synthesizer or a keyboard workstation, you'll get a lot of drum backing tracks in multiple genres like reggae, rock, salsa, blues, uh, heavy metal uh, and so on and so forth you can also literally go to youtube and type 12 bar blues drums or reggae drums or funk drums or whatever and you'll get a lot of channels a shout out to a channel which i follow pretty often his name is jim dooley and he releases a lot of drum backing tracks and it's a lot of fun because you can actually see him drumming while you practice so you can kind of put the drummer in view and play the piano. It's almost like a like a jam, come to think of it. Practicing with a drum backing track is going to improve your timing. It's also going to ensure, especially when you play a chord progression, things like, you know, if I do this, let's say two beats per chord, B flat, F, E flat, E flat minor. And if there's a drummer playing in the background, you have no option but to change the chord in time because gone your drummer has left you right so it, it's a great simulation of also playing in a eventual band which i'm sure a lot of you would like to do but for a piano practice method it always ensures you to think ahead to prepare ahead and a lot about playing a musical instrument even a guitar or a mandolin or a banjo or a flute or any instrument is not about what you're doing in the present it's what you're going to be doing in the immediate future on the piano it would mean the next chord you know I want to go to F sharp major, but I don't want to chill out about it. What I mean by that is if I play B flat minor for all the four beats of playing this chord, I don't want to think of B flat minor for maybe the third or the fourth beat at the very latest. One, two, 
थ्री फोर एट फोर आई एम इमीडिएटली नाउ वायर्ड टू प्ले द नेक्स्ट कॉर्ड विच इज एफ शार्प मेजर इन दिस केस सो अ ड्रामर वुड रियली हेल्प यू बिकॉज यूर प्रॉब्लम गोन हियर द सिम्बल यूर गोन हियर द ग्रूव रीसाइकल इट सेल्फ सो प्रैक्टिस विद अ ड्रम बैकिंग ट्रैक वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो द नेक्स्ट वे टू काइंड ऑफ वैलिडेट योर ओन स्किल्स इफ यू विल वुड बी टू ऑलवेज सिंग वाइल यू प्ले सो If you're doing a solo piano arrangement, do things like la da 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 da. If the melody was okay, now you don't want to mess up that melody because of the other hand. So if the melody original melody was ta na 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 ta na 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 na. Let's say that now while playing that. because of maybe lack of hand independence or coordination between the hands you end up doing you know or making a very watered down version of it as opposed to okay and singing while playing is also a nice way to combat the 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 guys on google who who upload notation of songs it looks really easy they even use words like easy or some of them don't even use the words easy they'll say this is the official notation and then it's absolute nonsense so it's a good way for you to know whether the sheet music you are in some cases buying with your hard earned money is actually right you know because a lot of us when we look at sheet music teachers experienced pros and even youngsters get overawed by it and say oh it's sheet music so i have to trust it because it looks in this very unique way in this respected respectful musical way but no it could also be an a bunch of absolute nonsense so you have to ensure that your notation is correct the best way to do that is for you to sing because you know the song the most natural way to align yourself with the song or the melody is for you to sing it and there's another challenge you you tend to alter the melody because of your left hand you have a certain pattern and you're not able to get the coordination or the independence so w- something has to take a hit either your left hand will take a hit or the right hand will take a hit if your right hand takes a hit real time you may not even know it because real time is almost impossible to judge oneself you know it's because you are in the heat of the moment playing your instrument you are not even going to know that you are playing it wrong and then you are practicing the wrong way for i don't know how long and then that goes into your you know subconscious brain when you sleep and you wake up and it starts getting fixed so the wrong answer your mind believes that it's the right answer so that's a bad thing you need to always be aware that oh yeah i am i doing the right thing am i playing the right melody you know so you don't want to waste your practice time so singing while playing very important okay the next thing seems very obvious but i found that a lot of my students and maybe some of you watching this are what you could term as bedroom musicians or bedroom piano players where or maybe living room or dining hall piano players i don't know what you want to call yourself but basically a person who doesn't go out there and play with music or jam with musicians this is something you need to definitely not just consider but you have to do it so at least a couple of times a week or maybe a couple of times a month find an apartment friend or maybe a fe- a family member who likes to sing and just have a chat with them and say okay do you like this song by adele or whoever it may be you know or some bollywood song and you can just get them to sing it and no harm in them being amateur mu- musicians or you know very beginner level anything the whole idea is to jam and collaborate and if you play with a singer or even an a, a person who's lacking timing it kind of improves your own timing because you have to follow them and i've learned this along the years of playing with choirs not to say that all the choirs i have played with have bad timing but if you think about it there are about 60 or 70 
people singing together and in our family's culture which is something i have been very fortunate to be part of a few members of my family my granddad and my mom were choir conductors as well as piano players in the same choir so that we never thought was unique growing up but now the way i think about it is that's a fairly that's a seriously unique skill to have because you have to control the timing with about 60 70 people you have to check whether they are in pitch or out pitch uh, you have to probably scold a few and kick a few people out of the room so to speak as i have observed uh, a few people who i know very closely doing and also it's very important for you to do all that and still play your instrument well and read your sheet music if it's given to you so be able to jam so definitely be in this real world zone of jamming with fellow musicians i would my personal recommendations would be singers who are very easy to find and drummers okay if you ever get your hands on a drummer definitely get a drummer for those of you who don't know you can always book a jam room or a rehearsal room near you a few a kilometer or two near you you should probably find a room to practice or you can even make your own house maybe convert one of the rooms into a music practice room that could be an interesting project okay so jam with fellow musicians or friends or family neighbors or i don't know whoever else okay so moving forward you have the chord pattern which you're going to play in your left hand before you start playing the right hand i would like you to sing the melody while keeping this pattern going and it goes a bit beyond that so let's say if the melody is la ra ta 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 ra ta ta ra na 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 ta ra ra ta ra re when you start playing it on the piano may not be that easy or you may even find it difficult to improvise beyond that you know so you could adopt maybe two ways of singing as well or three ways the first thing is if the melody is in your head sing it and then go go towards playing it ta na na ta pata ra ta is also boost your creativity because i feel that the most creative melody you can make as a individual would be from your voice from your vocal cords not from your piano or your guitar common challenges would or common problems you might face would be your melody tends to be very exercise or pattern like or very linear while when you sing you are automatically doing something which you want to be eventually catchy so start with singing it can help from the creative uh, perspective as well as from the technical perspective so until you get it right with your voice with this pattern don't simplify the pattern maybe but if you're doing it in a simple way first use your metronome 3 for keep some kind of counting going or a drum backing track as i told you earlier and then bring in the original pattern and when you're ready slowly but surely <clears throat> okay and if you want to grow forward with this creatively what i would recommend is maybe have a have a kind of a jam session with your voice and your piano you sing something and then you try to either respond to it back on the piano or you try to maybe mimic it you could copy it or you could uh co- counter it or complement it or it could even be a q and a or a call and response kind of thing between your voice and your piano so maybe that's the response now i'm mimicking Na 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 
na na na na na na na na na That's a long one. This will also test your memory, not only your hand independence, even your actual memory as a human. So, that's one more way to do it. And lastly, you can even consider a real-time way, which will be very helpful during a gig when you're soloing. It will make your solo a lot more lyrical, as they say, or I guess a lot more catchier and rememberable for the audience. You know, so real-time it would be... Try to align the notes almost in a chicken and egg environment between your voice and your piano in a sense you don't know what is coming first whether your voice is propelling the melody or the melody is coming from the piano and you're following it from the voice that's a very good problem or a, that's a very good environment to find yourself in so and start simple if you're struggling with hand independence start simple it's also very easy to kind of mess with rhythm when you sing because you're not confined to an environment if if you don't sing you may end up playing a lick which you already know you know like um Now that's a nice lick you already have it in your uh, arsenal so why only play that you can try and con- uh, play that with something organic like so maybe i'll start with something i want to bring out then from the bank So that's in the bank. That. You can kind of do a combo of what's stored in your library of your brain and what you're creating instinctively using well your voice. So your voice is a very good agent for creativity. Try to keep that in mind and the way I would see it is left hand plays a chord pattern. and the right hand will sing however you could also be a bass in a bass zone and do a chord pattern in the right hand and then do a bass line in the left because a piano is also a bass instrument pa ba bum pum pa pum there we go pa ra bum pum pum pa pum There we go. So the next thing to focus on when you're playing the piano is get into an environment where one hand is the engine hand while the other hand is the steering wheel hand or the the things which are in control of the vehicle so to speak. So I would give the same analogy to a guitar player in the sense your right hand is something which should generally well if you're a right-handed guitar player or bass player Uh, or violin player your right hand is generally setting the rhythm so that is the foundational thing so you would have a pattern it could be dum tik 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 dum tik tik dum dum tik so you want that to be as consistent as possible so that you can trust it in a sense you should not even think of this you should practice it so hard that it's just there it's it's a it's just in the subconscious mind and you can play that at will so then it becomes only about your steering wheel or your the moving parts or the drive what the driver would do in a vehicle the controllables which would be what you do on your fretboard of the guitar uh, or the violin on the piano you can adopt the same strategy by saying one hand should be the engine hand and the other hand should be the driver hand so if i have a pattern let's say an arpeggio pattern so this has to be staying its ground like a rock solid tree so to speak so no matter is even me trying to talk through in this video i'm not in my left hand is not influenced by me talking at least i think 
because I've practiced this pattern pretty hard over the years. So if you give me a newspaper, I'll read it. If you want me to do anything, eat food with this hand, no problem. This is not going to leave. Okay, so if you can do all of those things, have a chat with someone or have a burger in one hand, why can't you play a melody is my argument, you know. So don't look at hand independence to be that versus that or that note is aligning with that other note of the left hand or that is in a subbeat that's not on a subbeat or vice versa. You'll be governed too much by notation also and then it becomes more about the eyes less about the ears and no feeling also so if you can talk if you can develop an environment where you're trusting one hand to do its thing and then the other hand gets into the play you'll be a lot more creative you'll be a lot more capable to do a lot more things so right hand In fact, playing this was a lot or is a lot easier than talking to you right now on this video. It's actually tougher to talk and play than it is to play a melody there. It's actually a lot easier to do that. So maybe you should start by reading the newspaper or a magazine or something like that. You can express yourself or drive the vehicle because you're trusting your engine you're trusting all the parts which you can't control in your car like the tires and you're setting it up in your you know garage before you take it out to the highway so that's basically the idea one hand is the engine hand and the other hand is the driver hand so to speak okay uh, we have a few more points which i think are very important more approaches while you play the piano or checklists which you need to keep in mind okay i'm ready to publish this song as a youtube video or as an ig reel uh, maybe this should be a thing you have to tick before you upload the video can you beatbox a groove or can you come up with a drum groove while you're playing whatever it is you're playing so if you're doing a melody like um Because once you've practiced it, of course. What drum groove is in your head or what is the drummer doing with you while you're playing this is a question you need to ask, right? So think, maybe you could start with just some shakers. Maybe something more advanced like a cajon or a kick and a snare combo. I recommend this to students may not be with the melody line because that will be tough to beatbox the drums, play the melody, have something going on here. So maybe while you're doing a chord progression, just something like this. If you want to ensure, are you gonna, are you playing it perfectly fine before your band practice? So you are not responsible for causing a timing issue in the practice. Beatbox a drum groove. Of course, I'm not a beatboxer, but you get the idea. It's just to simulate some kind of a groove. If you don't want to bring the sound out of your mouth, at least have it inside you. Never play the piano alone, so to speak. Even though you you will be alone when you practice, for the most part, you should keep the drummer next to you as a almost like a ghost friend. And that has to kind of influence your playing get you to move better to the music and your timing will definitely improve okay and that brings me to the next point which is very related which is feel the pulse while you play anything you should you see even if i play something a bit more advanced you could say 
you observe my head and my leg and my entire body for it to even survive this music i have to play the pulse that's how i look at it some people look at it as saying that pulse is tough to do after a point after you kind of cross that barrier of it being hard to do it becomes a survival skill if you don't feel the pulse you cannot play your brain is wired to just think that everything you're doing is wrong which is a good thing by the way because it might be wrong if you cannot feel the pulse especially to feel the subdivisions <laughs> for you to know that it's an e or an a real time while you're playing you can you can look at notation and you can you can go one e and a two e and while you're in a jam room right you have to trust your instinct for that you need the pulse the pulse is how not only you but everyone who listens to you and your music will vibe with the with the song okay it's a consistent tempo which you're communicating to your audience which you have to have from it within yourself otherwise i don't think they would bother so you don't have to say 1 2 3 4 you just have to move your body so you might want to consider practicing this exercise on one of those bouncing exercise balls uh, you can also gain a workout while you're at it i guess okay so feeling the pulse is really really important and coming to a few sort of general things you need to do while playing good habits if you will uh after you've got to some level of competence or after you think you've achieved something satisfactory on your instrument i would suggest keeping maybe a cell phone next to you with the voice recorder app or maybe if you use a recording software if you want to hear it in better clarity you can connect your instrument to that and just record yourself maybe before your video just do the audio record yourself and hear yourself back if it's a long performance and if it's debatable you know if you not if you don't feel yes or no about it then take a good night sleep after a good night sleep listen to it the next morning and then evaluate so you have to evaluate don't bother to send it to anyone else just give it to others when the final product is ready you have to trust your own instinct you have to trust your own self when you play music that's the most important skill i would say you should have you know so listen to yourself in today's day and age you have these recording apps on cell phones so it's a great piece of technology to have at probably the home screen of your phone so maybe put that voice recorder app right there put the phone on record bang so get into that environment and you also may want to whenever you're in the process of practicing you may want to re- record variations or versions of what you're playing and save the file as v1 v2 or whatever it may be so you can then decide the next morning which is the best take i feel maybe you're working on a riff for your uh, uh, ensemble or your band and some of it something is a bit swung something is a bit faster something is a bit slower something has a bit more busyness versus the simple version so it's good to maybe record it all and just listen to v1 v2 v3 the next morning and see how it goes the best way to judge oneself is after playing not during playing so i have one final point for you which seems the most obvious you may think why is this guy saying this but i have to say it because it helps with your musicality this would be relax it's as simple as that so you need to practice in a very very chaotic environment you have to be very busy you have to be highly aggressive and intense but during the final performance when you're about to get it out there you have to be absolutely relaxed so that's what you're working towards you're working towards being relaxed during the final gig or the final performance so if it's a gig you're probably not thinking of yourself at all you're thinking about the audience you're thinking about the song you're thinking about your band what your drummer is doing you're smiling at certain people which i don't tend to do very often but still you could consider things like that you could jump around dance focus on the bigger picture maybe the entertainment value of the show you know so that is important from a 
concert perspective also from a recording perspective because people are going to hear that back for years and years to come but what happens is when you're not relaxed when you go in for the recording what will happen is your adrenaline kicks in and because you feel you've put in a lot of effort you'll think that the recording is nice when it's actually not you've made a lot of mistakes so it, music also tends to be very sport like in nature for the brain you think that oh because you're sweating it out because you've put in so much of work it has to be great but no if you're not relaxed if your body and mind is not stable you're not going to play useful music because you don't want the other guy to feel your uh, pain or all the sweat that you put in you just want the other guy to enjoy what what you just did so for that to happen you need to take a step back probably take a break if you need to revisit the recording the next morning relax and also when you play focus a lot on your breathing when you focus a lot on your breathing you tend to add a lot more uh, auto or natural dynamics which the body will just get out of your piano and the natural dynamics will result in volume control and the duration of notes will be adjusted in a very very fine way so lot of the elements of music volume duration and pitch can be controlled especially volume when you just breathe and just focus on your breathing so if i take uh, something like um, uh so as you can see whenever i breathe out I don't know why but the volume is just dipping on the piano. I'm not even telling the piano play soft, play loud. So it's just a natural way to just get instant volume control and I found that this works on a few other instruments as well. Uh, so you, if you play other instruments, focus on your breathing that can not only make your playing better, it can make your overall projection of the dynamics dynamics is a very important part of music it's not about playing the chord pattern exactly on time with the melody in the right hand with that uh, bass line and with that inversion music is far beyond that it is also to do with dynamics it's the things we can't explain these small changes these small Uh, you know human changes as i like to call them because in this day and age we don't care about that considering the software which can give us quantizing and just instant loops and just drawing of data you know so the human element will come out of the music from you and it will communicate well with other humans as you know as you probably know music is by humans for humans so all the stuff in between is just to help aid the process i guess so hope you found this uh, rant useful and hope you can utilize some of these approaches in your playing and probably have them as checklists before your final performance is out there uh, for everyone to hear thanks all the best and catch you in the next one cheers